Let everyone know that in Democratic Taiwan, the ruling party led by Tsai Ing-wen rigged the 2020 presidential election by over 4 million ballots. The Democratic Progressive Party in Taiwan has used staged events and fraud from the 319 incident in 2004 to Tsai Ing-wen's nationwide election fraud in 2020. Tsai Ing-wen rigged her own party's primary to be the presidential candidate by using fake opinion polls and her internet army to attack her rival, William Lai. At first, Lai was ahead of her by 20%, but she used these methods to cheat Lai out of the nomination. Once she had to face off against Han Guo Yu, she did the same thing again by first using fake opinion polls to confuse everyone of the actual situation and used her internet army 1450 to smear Han. Then she used her last dirty trick against him to win the election, which was election fraud. In the 2020 presidential election, Tsai Ing-wen was in the same position as her predecessor, Chen Shui-bian, in 2004. Both of them faced the possibility of being voted out of office. Tsai knew full well that if she wanted to win, she had to rig the election. So she asked Li Jin-yong, who was experienced at forging documents, to head the Central Election Commission to rig the election. Li Jin-yong used the power of the Central Election Commission to control the election staff by sending their own people to each district's administrative office so that they could assign all of their own staff to administer the voting station instead of the original staff. They also used a special ballot box and other tools to rig the election. Preparations made by the Tsai government to rig the 2020 presidential election. One, they suddenly added 1,346 voting stations. Two, they reduced the number of registered voters in a voting station from 1,500 to 1,200. Three, they suddenly switched the original ballot box to a cardboard box the day of the election. Four, they changed the election rules so that election staff were no longer required to declare the total number of voters and leftover ballots. These changes were made all for the purpose of committing election fraud. Steps taken to commit election fraud. Each area's population did not increase, but the Central Election Commission increased the number of voting stations. With 1,346 voting stations and 1,200 new voters per station, this added approximately 1.6 million potential voters. The Central Election Commission said that they were doing this because they reduced the number of voters from 1,500 to 1,200, so the increase is necessary. However, we saw many voting stations with 1,400 to 1,600 registered voters, which proved that they lied about lowering the voters to 1,200 in each station. In actuality, the reason was to allow them to have more stations to stuff ballots. Registered voters in many voting locations exceeded over the 1,200 voter limit. The Central Election Commission added an additional 1,346 voting stations. Let's look at how the number of voters per station are calculated. <laughs> For this election, things occurred that have never been seen before. There were no lines during the entire voting process, but the turnout rate was very high. With so few voters present, how can the voting stations have 1,000 or more ballots? For this election, several abnormal things occurred all over Taiwan, such as the turnout rate not matching the number of people who voted, so of course there was ballot stuffing. How come the people can't investigate whether the government made preparations to commit fraud? Just because the government can use its administrative power they have the final say. Administrative power is given to them by the people, and when the government misuses it, the people need to take action by saying, no, you can't do that. Before the ballot counting process began, why did the election staff declare the number of ballots cast and leftover ballot? This is because they were not sure of the number of voters in their final station due to the stuffed ballots planted inside their secret compartment, which resulted in unreasonable turnout rates. For example, if there are 1,000 total voters in a station, and if 70% vote, then there should be 700 ballots. If we add the 400 stuffed ballots, then the turnout rate will be 110%. This would be over the limit, right? The Central Election Commission planned to execute things this way in order to rig the election. The Central Election Commission unexpectedly switched to cardboard boxes. Why did the Central Election Commission's Li Jinyang abuse his power to switch out the original ballot boxes for cardboard boxes before the election? The Central Election Commission did this for a clear reason. There is no conspiracy that can't be uncovered. God has his plan. We will understand in a moment. The DPP's tools for election fraud and actions to commit fraud. 
The 2020 presidential statistical analysis reveals huge anomalies and suggests very widespread and massive election fraud. In an election where there are two main political camps, their correlation between each other should be negatively correlated because when one side gains more support, the other camp support should decrease. This so-called negative correlation is similar to how a playground seesaw works, and it is a fundamental law of statistics. Before the presidential election, the Central Election Commission already erased the results of the 2018 local elections. Why did they do this? Fortunately, a computer science professor, Dr. Ma Tse Hung, already downloaded the results in 2018 and did an analysis comparing the relative support rate between the two sides in the 2018 local elections and the 2020 presidential election. The result of his analysis shows a very abnormal positive correlation between the two sides in the 2020 election, which means when the analysis also shows an abnormal positive correlation, this suggests massive fraud by the election staff and it means that the resulting ballots were fabricated by the staff and not due to the natural voting behavior of the electorate. In short, the abnormality of the analysis reveals widespread election fraud. The Central Election Commission is afraid that the data will reveal the truth. In the analysis of the U.S. presidential elections for the past 40 years reveals an overall negative correlation between the Republic and Democratic Party. In this 2020 Taiwan election, the correlation between the two camps was positive, which is abnormal. This kind of result is completely against the law of statistics and is against common sense for how people vote. These unexplainable results can be easily explained if we consider the possibility that massive election fraud took place. Election fraud explains how these unexplainable phenomena occurred. In addition to Dr. Ma's analysis, we can see upon further inspection that there are two types of election fraud. One is widespread ballot stuffing, the other is widespread ballot theft. Next, let's take a look at what occurred inside the voting stations. Election staff says number two ballot, but the election staff telling the ballots pretending not to hear it. If electoral staff would be so blatant about stealing ballots from a candidate, they must have been directed by someone to do so to fulfill an objective. Isn't the Central Election Commission the director of all of this? Where did all of these law-breaking election staff come from? Declaring ballots without looking at the ballots. If so many election staff don't follow the law, who is training them to do so? Where are they coming from? The presidential election was tallied with a water-based crayon. How can such an important presidential election use a crayon marker to record the ballots? Why was a crayon used to tally the ballots? What kind of crayon did they use? The answer is a water-based Amos Colorix crayon. Using a permanent marker does not allow for further changes to be made. But with a Colorix water-based marker, it can be wiped off with a wet paper towel and the original record can be wiped away. Let's look at this tally board. Why were crayons used instead of permanent markers? The answer is simple. Results recorded with an erasable marker can be easily changed. Many residents saw a hidden compartment inside the ballot box. In Taipei, a citizen also filmed this secret compartment inside the ballot box. This was no coincidence. It was a nationwide move to rig the election. Election staff suddenly took a neat stack of ballots with no creases on them from a secret hiding place. This election staff member suddenly picked up a secret stack of neat ballots from a chair. In one hand, he gets these secret ballots. He steps back to avoid being filmed. But what does he know?
but we can see the ballots in his hands have absolutely no creases and are very neat like fresh banknotes from a bank. From here, we can see that these ballots weren't cast by actual voters because ballots cast by voters will have all kinds of different creases. These kinds of ballots with no creases on them were obviously planted at the bottom of the ballot box. A ballot box with a hidden compartment inside. The election staff all knew that there was a compartment inside the box. Due to their guilty conscience, they lifted the compartment up and showed everyone. Look everyone, are there any more ballots? They all know that there's a compartment inside, and they all clearly knew that there were ballots already stuffed there beforehand. We also found that this compartment was designed with a notch so that the staff could easily lift up the compartment to easily retrieve the stuffed ballots. The election official lifted the compartment with the notch very naturally. When these ballots that were pressed at the bottom of the box were taken out, they had no creases on them. Actually, due to limited time, the staff could not crease the ballots one by one. Therefore, the stuffed ballots were all stacked extremely neatly. From here, we can see 100 ballots are just like a stack of 100 bills we can get from the bank. The thickness of both are no more than two centimeters. The presidential ballot box can fit stacks of 100 into it for a total of 400 ballots. That is, even before the voting started, the voters could not examine if the box was empty or not to see if there were ballots planted in them. Each of these cardboard boxes can fit at least 400 to 500 ballots without being discovered. In this election, the entire nation had around 17,500 voting stations, and 90% of them switched to cardboard boxes for the presidential ballot box. Approximately 15,000 of the stations used a cardboard box as their presidential ballot box. Looking back here, we can see 100 ballots hidden on the chair. The presidential ballot box can fit four stacks of 100 ballots. If a cardboard box can hold 400 ballots, how many millions of ballots can you stuff? At least 4 million. This is why in this presidential election, the true turnout was low, but the official turnout rate was high due to these stuffed ballots. The Central Election Commission stuffed a massive number of ballots inside the secret compartments. The election staff around Taiwan all used similar methods to steal ballots. Why is the election official in charge of taking the ballots out looking so carefully at all of them? Why are they doing this in a different voting stations? This official didn't take the ballots out one by one, but instead used both hands to reach into the box and kept sorting through the box to look for something. What is she looking for? We also noticed that this official had already picked up the ballots, but quietly put it back in the box. What is she doing? In this voting station, several people were sticking their hands in the ballot box, which is illegal. All of them were selecting which ballots to take out to declare. In this five minute video taken by the public during the ballot counting reveals that they only declared ballots for candidate number three, Sai Ying Wen. In the voting station with less observers, the election staff are illegally counting the ballots and committing election fraud. They selected only number three ballots for Tsai Ing-wen to declare. They put ballots for the other candidates in their hand. We don't need to even think about whose ballots those are. Those ballots are obviously for candidate two, opposition candidate Han Guo Yu. By not declaring his ballots, how will they get rid of these ballots? In this five minute video, 75 consecutive ballots in a row were declared for Tsai Ing-wen. Given her official support rate of 57%, it isn't reasonable to see this number of consecutive ballots declared for her. To stay within a normal standard deviation, Tsai needs over 99% support rate in order to have a reasonable chance of getting 75 ballots in a row. If this is an election fraud, what is? 
In other voting stations, there were also instances where only number three ballots for Tsai Ing-wen were declared for a period of time. These other stations also had these improbable instances occur as if Tsai Ing-wen was the only one participating in the election. When the compartment is lifted, a large hole was revealed at the bottom. Let's look again. When this election official lifted up the compartment, a hole suddenly appeared at the bottom of the box. This scene is too shocking and incredible. A presidential ballot box can be squeezed so that a hole appears at the bottom. Isn't the bottom of the box supposed to be sealed? No, these ballot boxes have been specially designed so that they can be squeezed to create a hole. So now we understand the reason the boxes can be squeezed to create a hole is to allow the election staff to steal the number two ballots for Han Guo Yu by throwing them back in the ballot box, removing them from the hole at the bottom. This way, the public won't be able to see it. Additionally, in this election, too many voting stations added additional staff to rig ballots and also to block the view of the general public. This cardboard box doesn't just have a secret compartment inside, but a hole that can be created when squeezing it. These are all designed to commit election fraud. The Tsai Ing-wen government used its administrative control to direct and execute all of these types of fraud in a democratic nation. In 2004, the DPP used the 319 incident to scam the Taiwan public to cheat the real presidential election winner, Lian Chen. Today we know that the 319 incident was staged to seize the presidency. Who can return the presidency to Lian Chen? More importantly, who can return the assets stolen by Chen Shui Bian? After four years under Tsai Ing-wen, the economy has experienced an unprecedented recession. The public is struggling badly. The media has been manipulated. The society's values have been destroyed. False rumors have been spread. Hatred has been put in the hearts of young people. The democratic rule of law has been trampled on. The Republic of China under Tsai Ing-wen's hands can already be called a dictatorship. Right here, we would like to ask all of the people of democracies in this world, can presidents of democratic nations change the ballot box to a cardboard box just because they feel like it? Can presidents of democratic nations use a water-based crayon to tally the ballots? Can presidents of democratic nations use a presidential ballot box with a secret compartment inside? Can presidents of democratic nations use a presidential ballot box which can be manipulated to create a hole? These things are not allowed in any democratic nation's election. The 2020 presidential election was pre-planned to have nationwide election fraud. The mastermind was the Tsai Ing-wen administration. This was executed by Li Jinyong. Fake opinion polls cannot cover up the truth. What you see here are the real opinion polls. Real polls cannot be manipulated. They cannot be faked. Let us ask ourselves this question. How can someone with nothing in their bank account suddenly have a lot of money? In a democratic nation, the origin of money would have to be explained or else it would be deemed to be illegally acquired. So where did Tsai Ing-wen get 8.17 million ballots? The people have long ago abandoned Tsai Ing-wen after four years of misrule. We can see from her rather empty political rallies that these 8.17 million ballots were no doubtedly obtained illegally. Tsai Ing-wen, you used the most despicable and dirty methods to commit election fraud to steal the nation's highest seat. You are the national thief of the Republic of China. Your many lies and fraud are already known around the world. You hold the power of the ruling party and the state machine to oppress the people and their freedom of speech. You violated and abused the law. You used election fraud to win the election. Do you believe the people have no ability to resist you? The ruling party has violated and abused the law. The people must force the party to step down. In 2016, Korea's president, Park Gwyn Hai, was brought down by the people for corruption and was sent to prison. In 2019, the next president, Moon Jae-in, also had three million people come out to impeach him due to appointing corrupt officials. The Korean people demanded to clean out the ruling party to re-establish a nation of justice and fairness again. In contrast today, 
Taiwan's president, Tsai Ing-wen, despite opposition from the people, insisted on finding a chairman for the Central Election Commission that had forged documents in order to help rig the presidential election. In addition to this, she engaged in smuggling with the president's airplane, faked her PhD thesis, and used underhanded and dirty methods. Your methods are a hundred times worse than Park Gwen Hai and Moon Jae-in of Korea. The Korean people bravely stood up and forced their corrupt president to step down. In democratic Taiwan, the people can also do the same. In a democratic nation, a politician that steals an election like Tsai Ing-wen must step down. Tsai Ing-wen, your election fraud has been exposed. Your illegal behavior has been filled. There is also undeniable statistical evidence that you cheated. The evidence is so solid that you can no longer lie. The people will no longer let you lie. The only thing you can do is step down. Don't wait for the people to force you to step down. You shouldn't underestimate our determination.